Hey guys, Sebastian here with another video. This time I wanted to go over staking pools, uh, how I think they will evolve over time, and some of the problems with the current model that Cardano is proposing. So I think what will happen at first is that we'll have what I call uh, for-profit pools. That is to say, the pool will take some of the profit and give the remaining profit uh, back to the users. Over time, various pools will compete, uh, trying to uh, return more and more of the profits uh, to users until there's like a set of optimal pools that uh, give as much back as like humanly possible for the pool uh, organizers make uh, no profit at all. Uh, after this, or maybe at the same time, we'll have the evolution of what I call for cause pools. That's to say the pool, instead of giving the money back to the users or all of it back to the users, uh, they will donate part of the uh, revenue to a group, an organization, a charity, uh, you know, uh, some uh, sort of cause. And the problem with these groups is that if you don't believe in the cause or you're not interested, then why would you join this group, right? Uh, so they will have to evolve to a community-driven pool. That is to say, uh, members of the community uh, will be able to vote on a set of uh, charities, organizations, uh, individuals, possibly the users themselves, uh, for who to give the money to. Okay, and if you want to make this a really decentralized community pool, that is to say, there is no uh, pool organizer that decides these uh, sets of charities, organizations they have money to, then these... Uh, will eventually evolve to be that anybody can uh, make a proposal and all you have to do is give a valid address. So you can see at uh, the bottom right, uh, somebody proposed giving money to this individual and the way they proposed giving money to this individual is say, here's an address. Uh, this is address is currently owned by this individual. Uh, please vote for this cause. Okay. And so to do this, you'll need some sort of account registration mechanic. Uh, which people may not be too interested in. Some people may have their reservations about doing this. Uh, but you know, they'll have some sort of registration system, possibly related to like message signing. So you have to sign a given message uh, with your uh, keys in order to prove that you are uh, truly a member of this pool. Okay. So imagine uh, you're part of this pool and you want to vote. You've registered your account. So how uh, do you vote? Okay, so the uh, first thing you may think of is uh, every user gets one vote. Obviously, this not, doesn't work. As you can see in this uh, example right here, if I have you know 100 ADA, in this case for Cardano, uh, I can split up my 100 ADA to five different accounts uh, that are all actually run by me, each with 20 ADA. Therefore, you know I have five times the amount of voting power. Uh, to solve this uh, problem, uh, you'll have to weigh all the votes by the amount of stake. That is to say, uh, now, I have 1% stake, and even if I split up my 1% stake to five accounts all owned by me, uh, the total amount of stake is the same, and therefore my uh, vote on the pool is the same. So here comes the problem. So one of the uh, functionalities of Cardano is something called heavyweight delegation. That is to say there are two delegation mechanics. One of them is delegation uh, called lightweight delegation, where uh, you delegate to somebody else uh, outside the blockchain. And the way you do this is you create the certificate and you give it to the other person uh, through some trusted channel of your choosing. And then uh, whenever it comes time to make a block, the person you gave your certificate to can prove that you've met, uh, you've made the delegation and they can prove, uh, they can verify the block on your behalf. Okay, so that, that's one way to do delegation. Another way to do delegation as proposed is heavyweight delegation, okay? And the way it works is that to do heavyweight delegation, you need to, pr uh, possess at least uh, more than 10% of stake in the protocol. So there's no uh, concrete number given yet, but say it's like a, you need to own more than 1% or you need to own more than 0.1%, something of the sort. Okay. And if you own more than 0.1% or whatever the number ends up being, you can partake in this protocol. And what you do is you delegate on the blockchain. That is to say, everybody can publicly see that you took your state and you are delegated, delegating it the block creation to somebody else. And what's interesting about this is that it's a transitive relationship. That is to say, if A delegates to B, and then B delegates to C, C's stake is actually uh, the sum of their coins plus stake of A plus stake of B. Okay, so they you can create some chain of delegation such that whenever a block uh, gets created, it may have to be passed along through multiple people before you eventually find who has the right to create this block. 
Okay, and this is an interesting idea. I thought about this for a while. I thought, here's a problem that I may create. Okay, the, the problem is called pool hijacking. Okay, imagine you have canoe pool, which is a mess, the system I described before, okay? So they are a popular pool, they own 6% of the total stake uh, in at, uh, VEDA. And they pay maybe just a fictional number, say $300 a month for their servers. You know, I'm just playing this number, uh, you know, for nowhere, but you, let's just say $300. Okay, and they allow, just like I said, for people to vote on various issues. So right now they have three causes, possibly three charities uh, that are the top three uh, commitments and that's where their proceeds will go to. Cunning pool on the other hand, uh, you know, their for-profit pool or community pool or otherwise, all they care about is making money. Uh, and they own 3% of the network. And because they own a smaller percent, they pay, you know, a smaller server fee, maybe like a $200 a month or something. And Cunning Pool is kind of tired of this uh, $200 per month fee. They'd rather get rid of it somehow. So they look at Community Pool and think, wouldn't it be nice if we just uh, delegate our stake to Community Pool and then add ourselves as a cause? Okay, so as you can see in the picture, Community Pool has gone from 6% to 9% of all the stake. And because there's more people on the network now, their server cost has gone up to maybe $400 a month. So now Cunning Pool owns 33% of all stake of Community Pool, right? And they add themselves as a cause, as you can see at the bottom, that's to say 33% uh, of all uh, profits will now go to Cunning Pool because they, they voted for themselves. So they will have at least 33%, okay? And so everybody can see this happening because they, you know, they put themselves up as a cause, but if this is truly de decentralized, then like nobody can really do anything about it. And uh, this way, uh, Cunning Pool has, you know, cut their server costs from $200 a month down to zero a month. Therefore, their uh, net uh, profit has now gone up. If you can imagine this uh, taken further out, you can imagine Cunning Pool delegate to a community pool who will then realize that this is happening and will find some other community pool and delegate their uh, stake to this other pool and will eventually bubble up all the pools until... Uh, you know, somebody either owns, you know, over 50% or at some point somebody realizes like, hey, people are just taking advantage of my community pool and I'm just going to stop providing the service. So there's a few ways you can solve this problem. One of them is, and I think this is uh, one of the ones that uh, is mentioned, is to have diminishing rewards uh, depending on your pool size. So you can see the x-axis down there is pool size and the y-axis is reward. So the green line represents a linear uh, relationship. That is, the, the more stake your pool has, the more rewards you will get, which is what you would imagine at first in a simple world. Uh, the red line uh, is a sublinear uh, reward. That's to say, as your pool grows in size, you'll get more reward, but eventually it'll flat, flatten out and uh, you will no longer really gain any advantage of owning a higher percent uh, of the pool and that is to uh, make sure that no one pool owns too much of the network okay the other way to do it is the blue line that is to say up to a certain point it will be linear and there will be a cutoff point such that if your pool grows higher than this certain point there is no real advantage anymore and you will not get any more rewards so IOHK has hinted towards the blue line as their uh, method of choice but it has not been formally announced uh, but the problem with the blue line is it doesn't stop the attack I mentioned. That's to say, people will uh, repeat this process as I show here up until they get to the blue line. Right? Once they get to the blue line, so for example, if the blue line is 9%, uh, then Cunning Pool still has an advantage of doing this because they're under the 9% cutoff. Right? So there may be some problems with this. It depends where the blue line is drawn, at which point. If it's below the heavyweight uh, threshold, then it's not a problem. If it is above the heavyweight threshold, then you may have this problem uh, that I mentioned. Another way you can solve this is just to get rid of this uh, double delegation feature. If you think about it, there's some advantages to this double delegation. It's, uh, you know, kind of debatable whether or not this is actually a uh, feature you want to have. Uh, but, so, you know, one option we could do is just to uh, make this no longer possible. 
Uh, the last one is just no community pools. That's to say, we will have to accept, you know, as a group that there will be no such thing as a community pool. It will, no, it will not be possible to set up some decentralized pool where people can vote on their favorite cause. Uh, and that comes down to the fundamental problem. If we have this uh, heavyweight delegation, then if a pool uh, advertises a feature that is good for users, then it is also good for a pool, right? So if you can imagine if some pool even says like, hey, if you sign up to our pool, uh, we'll give you the first month uh, bonus reward, something of the sort. And some other pool sees this and goes like, I'm not a user, I'm a pool. But if I get you know reward for joining this other pool, I might as well delegate to this other pool and claim the reward, right? So anything that's good for user in this current proposal implies it's good for the pool to also do this. And uh, yeah, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, I would love to hear some comments from you guys what you think about this problem. If there's any other solution that you can think of, think of that I haven't mentioned. If there's some detail I missed, love to hear it from you guys. And uh, thank you. As always, you can uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more videos I make. I'm also on Patreon, Twitter, and whatnot. So uh, if you want to see more videos on this subject, uh, let me know. And please subscribe to uh, keep seeing the, them as I make them.